Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at one of the best features of ES6, which is object destructuring and array destructuring, as well as the spread operator. And these features are absolutely crucial if you want to develop using a front end framework such as React, and even if you don't want to use it, they're incredibly useful for making your code so much cleaner and easier to work with. So without further ado, let's get started now. So to get started, I just have Visual Studio Code open, as well as the console output for all of the code that we're going to be writing. And to get started, I kind of want to explain what destructuring is. And the idea of destructuring is to take an object or an array in this case, and convert it into smaller objects or smaller elements or smaller variables. So let's take a look at a very simple example. We're just going to take our alphabet array, and we want to get the very first two elements in that array. So normally, if you want to get the first element, you would do something like this. You would say alphabet of index zero, and that's going to give you the first element. So we can just log this out to make sure this is working, console.log a. And as you can see over here, it's logging out a. Let's just zoom that in actually. There we go. It's logging out a. And for the second element, we would do the exact same thing, just like this, and we would log b. And you can see that's working properly. But this is kind of clunky to do, and there's a much easier way to do this by using destructuring. So let's comment out this way of doing old things. And let's actually come in here, and we know that we want to get the elements A and B. So we can just say we want to get A, and we want to get B. And we're just going to set that equal to here alphabet. And if we save, you see we get the same output, A and B. But how exactly does this work? So the idea of destructuring is that what you want to do is you take the element you want to destructure, and you put that on the right side of the equal sign. Essentially, you're saying destructure this alphabet array, and what we want to do is since we have an array, we put our parentheses over here, our array brackets around the elements that we wanted to supply. So we have our variable names A and B that we want to actually get out of this array. And we put those inside of those brackets so that we know we're taking this array apart and putting it into these constants A and B. And then the position of these elements is where they're going to get pulled out. So A is the first element inside of this array. So it's going to get the first element. B is the second element. So it's going to get the second element here and so on. So you can see we get the first and second element, and we just need to put a third element in here, for example, C, and this is going to give us the third element. And if we save that, you see we get C over here. But what if we wanted to skip B, for example? What if we only wanted A and C? Well, we can just remove B, leave in this comma, and this is going to say skip the second element. So if we save that, you see we just get A and C, and that's working perfectly fine. But what if we want to get the rest of the elements inside of the alphabet? That's where the idea of the spread operator comes in. So we can just come over here, put three dots and whatever you want to call the rest of alphabet. We're just going to call it rest and let's log that out. So console.log of rest. Now, if we save that, you see that our first element a goes into the variable a, we skip the second element and then the third element c goes into this variable c, as you can see, a and c, and then everything else, all of the rest of our array, d, e, and f, they all go into this rest variable, which gets printed out over here on the right side of the screen, as you can see, d, e, f. Another really powerful thing with destructuring and the spread operator is you can use it to combine two arrays together. So for example, we can come down here and we can just say we want to create a new array. And this new array is going to be our alphabet array and our numbers array combined together. So we know that we want this to be an array and we want to get all of the elements inside of alphabet. So we can just say dot 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 alphabet. And this is going to spread all of the alphabet letters all across here inside of the array. And then after that, we want to do the same exact thing, but for numbers. So what this is going to do is it's going to put all the alphabet elements here and then all the numbers afterwards. And we can come in here and we can print that out. So we can just say print new array. And if we save that, you see we get all of the alphabet and then all of the numbers afterwards. Now, granted, this isn't entirely that useful for arrays because we can do the same exact thing by saying alphabet.concat and then we pass in numbers. That's going to give us, as you can see, the exact same output over here. But when we move into objects, this syntax will become incredibly useful for combining two different objects together. Another place that the array version of this is incredibly useful is when you're dealing with functions and returning more than one parameter from a function. So let's create a function down here. And this function is just going to be called sum and multiply. Whoops, multiply. And what this is going to do, it's going to take two numbers, a and b, and it's just going to sum them together and multiply them together and return both of those in an array. So what we're going to return here, a plus b, and we're also going to return a times b. So now when we call this function, we're going to be getting an array. So let's do that real quick. We'll say sum and multiply. We'll just say two and three. And we're just going to set this to a value. So we'll say const array is going to be equal to that. And then we'll just console.log out that array. And let's remove all the other code since we don't actually need that right now. And if we save that, you see we get our sum as the first number, two plus three is five, and we get the multiplication two times three as our second number in that array. But we can use that array destructuring to just come in here and say we want the sum 
right here, it's the first element. And we know that the multiplication here is going to be the second element. So we can just say we want to destructure the return from this as two different variables, one sum and one multiply. And now we can come in here, we can log out sum and we can log out multiply. And over here, we get sum as five and multiply as six. Something else that's really handy that we can do with this destructuring is we can actually set default values. So let's say in here that this also maybe could return a division, division. And by default, we just want to set the division to maybe say no division. Okay, so by default, this will say no division. But if we pass it a division, it'll actually set to that division. And we can come in here, log out division, and you can see it says no division because this sum and multiply is only returning two properties. But if we came in here and set another property, a divided by b, and we run this, you'll see that now division is actually being populated with that third parameter that's being sent out. But when that's not there, it gets populated to the default value, which we set inside of our destructure. And the power of destructuring is really not that apparent in arrays. It's still really useful to be able to destructure in arrays. And like you can see here, there's many use cases for it, especially in functions. But the real power of destructuring comes with objects. So let's jump over and look at object destructuring. So here we are with two basic objects. We have person one and person two, and they have the properties of name, age, and address. And that address has the properties of city and state. And now when we want to actually destructure an object, it's going to work very similarly to an array. So let's just go down here and we can just say that we want to get maybe the name of the person and we want to get their age. So since we're destructuring an object, we use curly braces instead of square brackets. And we just say what we want to get. We want to get the name property and we want to get the age property. And we want to get them from person two, for example. So we'll say person two and we're going to console.log out our name. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the age. And if you say that, we see we get the name Sally and the age 32. This works exactly the same as the array destructuring. But instead of it being based on position, it's actually based on the name of the key. So for example, name here is set to name up here and age and age. They need to match. But what if you want to use a different name? What if you want to set this variable here to be first name instead? All you would do is put the actual name inside of the object or destructuring, in our case name, and then after that, you put a colon and then the actual variable name you want. So for our example, we want this to be first name. And then we can come down here and we can print out first name. And if we save that, you see we get the same exact output. And what this is doing is it's taking the name property from the person and it's mapping that to this first name variable that we're creating. And we can even still use default values inside of here. For example, let's say that we want to get something else that the person doesn't already have. Let's say we want to get favorite food. And by default, we just want this to be, we'll just say rice. And we can come here, we can log out favorite food. And you can see by default, it is rice. But if we set the favorite food, for example, we'll just say their favorite food is watermelon. Put a comma here, you'll now see that watermelon is being outputted. We can do the same thing for first name. We can default the first name here to John. And if this person has no first name and we save, you'll see that this first name gets set to John. But when they do have a first name, you'll see that it becomes Sally, which is their actual first name. Also, just like with the array deconstructuring, we can do the spread operator as well. So let's go all the way back here to where we just have name, and we can just put dot 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 and any variable name you want. For example, we'll call this rest, and this is going to be the rest of our object. So if we save this, you'll see that we'll get everything else inside of that object, except for the name, which we already took out. So we'll have the address here, the age, as well as the favorite food. But since we took name out here in the destructuring, name does not show up in that rest object. Also, something that's really nice about destructuring objects is you can actually destructure nested objects. For example, address. We can come in here and we can just say that we want to get the street. So we'll say address. And inside of that address, what we want to do is we want to get the street. So what we do is we put the key here, address, which matches the address key inside of the object. And then we put it again, the curly braces, saying that we just want to destructure this new object. And we just want to get the street. So in here, we can print out street. And if we save that, you see how we're getting undefined. And that's because there is no street property in address. So let's, for example, get city instead. Now we can save that and make sure we change our variable name down here. And you can see that we're getting our city, which is somewhere else, just like it is inside of the object here. And again, we can do default values. Essentially, this works exactly the same. We're just nesting our object deconstruction inside of another object deconstruction. Another thing we can do is actually combine two different objects. So let's take our two objects here and let's remove the name and the address from person number two. And we're gonna combine person number one and person number two, and everything in person number two will overwrite what's in person number one. So an easy way to do that is we can just come down here. We're gonna say that we want this to be person three, 
And person three is going to be equal. We need to put it inside of our curly brackets here because we're doing destructuring. And we're just going to get all of the rest of person one and all of the rest of person two. And what this is going to say is it's going to say, take everything inside of person one and put it in the object, and then take everything in person two and also put it in the same object, but overwrite anything that was already in person one. And we can print out person three down here. And as you can see, we get the name of Kyle, which is up here, the name in person one. We get the age of 32 because this gets overridden from person two. Same with favorite food watermelon that gets added by person two. And then the address here is the same exact address as person one up above because person two doesn't have an address. And this ability to combine two objects together like this is very prevalent in frameworks such as React and even just in normal JavaScript. Another thing that I think is the most important and useful part of object deconstructuring is the ability to use it inside of functions inside of the arguments. So let's come down here and create a function. And this function is just going to be called print user. And this is going to take in a user. And all this is going to do is we're just going to console log user. So now if we save that and we actually call this function, so we say print user and we pass it in person one, you can see it prints out the object for that user. But what if we only really want to get the name and the age of the user inside of this print user function? For example, what if we wanted to print something like this? We could say name is, and then we could print out the name just like this user.name. And then we could say also age is, and we can print out the user's age by just saying user dot, whoops, user dot age. Just like this. Now, if we say that you says name is Kyle and age is 24. But since we only are using the name and the age, inside of this argument, we can just actually use destructuring. We can say here that all we want to do is we're going to take in an object. That's what these curly braces are saying. We're taking an object, and all we want is the name and the age property of that object. And now we can come down here. We don't actually need this user any anymore. We just say name and age. And when we save that, you see we get the exact same output over here because we're passing in person one and is destructuring that and saying all we want is the name and the age. We can also set default. For example, we can come in here and say favorite food, and we can set that to a default again of watermelon. And then when we come down here, we can also print out that. So we can just say right here, we can say, whoops, food is, and we just want to print out the favorite food. And now when we say that, you see it says food is watermelon. But of course, if we come over here and we put a favorite food, for example, rice, and we save it again, you see over here, it now says food is rice. This right here is the single most useful part of object destructuring, in my opinion, and I use this by far the most, especially when working with languages like React, because React very heavily uses object destructuring inside of its function calls. And speaking of React, I'm currently working on a React course right now. So if you're interested in learning React and want to learn more about the course I'm working on and more information about when it will be released, Make sure you go down in the description below, click on the link and sign up for my email list where I'll keep you notified of all the latest information on my React course. And with that out of the way, you know everything you need to know about object and array destructuring. And I can finally go shave all of this off my face because I did not realize how bad it was until I just saw myself in the camera now. Also, make sure to check out my other videos, they're going to be linked over here, and you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this where I simplify the web for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.